People often talk about the wisdom of crowds. At this tech conference, academics are asking the public to help solve one of the biggest problems in science. My name is Pietro Michelucci. I helped create Stall Catchers. Stall Catchers is an online game that anyone can play. We show a series of short movies of blood vessels in the brain, and players try to decide whether the blood vessels are flowing or stalled. And the reason we ask this question is that in Alzheimer's disease, we know that there's significantly reduced brain blood flow. If we can figure out what's causing these stalls, then we can potentially get to a treatment. This exercise in citizen science is attempting to uncover the secrets of Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's is the leading cause of dementia, which affects about 46 million people worldwide. The disease attacks the brain, and the brain is regarded by many scientists as one of the most complex and mysterious objects in the universe. Your brain is absolutely incredible. You have 100 billion brain cells, neurons. They're connected in 100 trillion connections where the neurons talk to each other. That's more connections in your brain than there are stars in our galaxy. And we don't really understand fundamentally how the brain works yet, how memory works. The erosion of memory is not the only symptom of Alzheimer's disease. Well, Alzheimer's disease is a brain disease that causes dementia. So dementia is a set of symptoms that are changes in the way you can learn and think and remember, and they progress through the brain as more of the brain gets uh, taken over by the disease. People with Alzheimer's disease have brain shrinkage, so the cells in the brain die, the ones that do the thinking, and you also have accumulation of toxic proteins in the brain. They're sort of like you think about soluble scrambled egg, and then when you cook it, it congeals into this mess, and you get these congealed plaques and tangles, they're called, in the brain. And we think that these two lesions are contributing to the death of the brain cells and the symptoms of dementia. There is currently no cure for Alzheimer's. When a patient dies, families often donate their loved one's brain to research. Comparing diseased tissue with healthy brain tissue allows scientists to learn more about the condition. If you look at the brain in the hippocampus, which is a part of the brain really important for making new memories, you can see in a healthy person, this one didn't die of Alzheimer's disease, they have these beautiful dark purple cells, those are the brain cells in the hippocampus, and this lovely pink neuropil, which is the brain tissue around it. And that's what the hippocampus usually looks like, so that's what you need to form new memories. But in a person who died with Alzheimer's disease, you can see that those brain cells are missing, so they've died over the 20 years of the person living with Alzheimer's disease. You can almost see the little holes in the tissue where the brain cells were. This is the physical evidence of the brain changes in Alzheimer's disease. Dr Josephine Barnes is a senior research fellow at University College London. UCL describes dementia as the greatest scientific, medical and socio-economic challenge of our times. As with stool catchers, Dr Barnes studies blood vessels in the brain. I look at brain imaging to assess the uh, vessel health and the consequences of poor vessel health in the brain and the relationship of that with other markers of Alzheimer's disease, for example, brain shrinkage, because that will enable me and people that I work alongside to look at whether or not these measurements are useful for diagnosis, whether they're useful to tell how a patient is going to develop over time in terms of their symptoms, and also as um, measurements in clinical trials to test whether drugs actually work. In the case of one researcher, the personal and the professional are intimately linked. I'm Joseph Gibelli, and I'm a neuroscientist and author. I wrote a book called In Pursuit of Memory, The Fight Against Alzheimer's, which was partly inspired by my own experience witnessing Alzheimer's in my grandfather, and also from my experience as a neuroscientist and an Alzheimer's researcher. That's my grandfather, Abbas. And this is me with him when I was very young. Uh, this was years before he started getting symptoms. Um, he was a very charismatic, very energetic person uh, back then. He used to come and visit us from Iran, and every few years he was a little bit worse, a bit more forgetful, a bit more confused. And eventually he started getting lost in our neighborhood. My parents would have to go out and find him, and it culminated in him uh, essentially not being able to recognize me or my sister and then the rest of our family. 
Memory has always fascinated me, these ghostly images that are just passing through your mind. And so the idea that it's, it's actually physically encoded in the brain, that it's stored somewhere, that it exists somewhere in your mind, is quite an unusual thing to contemplate. One of my favourite quotes actually is by a neuroscientist called Michael Gazaniga, who said that everything in life is memory, save for the thin edge of the present. And I just, I think that's, that's so true, and people do take memory for granted. A lot of the reason as to why Alzheimer's research was delayed for so long was because there was this overarching fear about the illness. Lots of people that I spoke to for the book, one of the first things they said to me that it was that we just found it terrifying as an illness, that you know that you can have your personhood, your selfhood slowly erased before your family's eyes. My inspiration comes from the brain. I love understanding what I consider the last frontier of biology, which is how the brain works. And I think the only way we can make a real difference is that people like me and millions of others around the world sitting in our labs trying to understand small pieces at a time and then working together to make those small pieces into a treatment. Alzheimer's isn't a normal part of getting old, but the risk does increase with age. For that reason, many dementia scientists end up confronting the disease firsthand. Well, when I started in Alzheimer's research, um, I had no personal experience. But over the course of the last 15 years, in fact, three of my grandparents have um, had Alzheimer's disease. I feel that I'm not just doing this for the greater good, but also there is a selfish element. I have children myself, and I would very much like to get to the bottom of this for the sake of my generation, but also the following generations.